now we want to understand what is states of malaya states of malaya is only formed after Malaysia agreement was signed where this how how does it, did that happen okay when Malaysia agreement was signed we look at article one of the Malaysia agreement the colonies of North Borneo and Sarawak and the state of Singapore shall be federated with the existing states of the Federation of Malaya so what is this existing states of the Federation of Malaya? If we look at Article 1, Clause 2, Constitution of the Federation of Malaya 1957, the states of the Federation has been grouped there. The formerly non-Malay state, which is Johor, Kedah, Kelantan, Negeri Sembilan, Pahang, Perak, Polis, Langok, and Terengganu, and Malacca and Penang, is, which is formerly known as the Settlement of Malacca and Penang. And the in the interpretation and general clause ordinance, states of the federation also have been defined there. It is a federation of Malaya 1957. So the existing state of the federation of Malaya is federation of Malaya 1957. So this is the exact words, huh? not just make up words. Now, when we form Malaysia, this state of the federation of malaya has become state of malaya based on this article 1 clause 2 of constitution of federation of malaya 1957 and interpretation and general clause ordinance 1948 you look at the definition of states of the federation so you will you will understand that state of the federation means state of malaya what is the difference between uh definition of states of the federation and states of malaya the difference in 1957 you see that there is two unit in the state of the federation which is formerly known as malay states and settle settlements at first it was grouped like that johor kedah kelantan negeri sembilan pahang perak polis langok and terengganu was grouped as the formerly malay state Malacca and Penang, it was formerly known as the settlement. So states of the federation was being grouped like that when the Federation of Malaya 1957 gained independent. You know, when Malaya gained, Federation of Malaya gained independent in 1957, they, they are still strong regional, regionalistic feeling. They, they have state feeling is very strong. Some people from Kelantan, still feeling like they are from Kelantan. From Negeri Sembilan, they want their identity as Negeri Sembilan is very strong. This is a regionalistic feeling in, state, in the Federation of Malaya, Malaya in 1957. So even in the constitution, it was still group like that. And then when Malaysia was formed, it becomes states of Malaya. What has changed is that all this group has been removed. All the state 11 state of the malaya have been uh, put in the alphabetical order one if they have been put in the upper alphabetical order and second all this uh, component unit of settlement and malay state has been removed so that they they, they they want to reduce the ill feeling between the regional state in the federation of malaya at that time this is what happened when malaysia agreement 1950 1963 was signed Federation of Malaya 1957, and then it became States of Malaya 1963. It is still the same identity, but the name has been changed. There is a reason where the name has been changed to States of Malaya instead of Federation of Malaya. Why it has been changed after Malaysia Agreement was signed? The reason is this decolonization process of Singapore and merger. I tell you just now that Malaya is Federation of Malaya plus Singapore. That is Malaya. And the British, the British intention, the mistake that the British feel when they give independence to Federation of Malaya and they separate Singapore from Federation of Malaya, they feel responsible for that separation. So the British have their own intention. They want to rectify their mistake, that their, their mistake of separating this territory. They want to combine it together. So that's why 
in one process of decolonization of Singapore, there will be a merger between Singapore and Federation of Malaya later on. I will explain later. So, but first, we understand that Federation of Malaya, when Malaysia Agreement was signed in 1963, it became States of Malaya. So, so we look at the decolonization process of Singapore. Okay. Okay, decolonization process of Singapore is like this. At first, State of the Federation, which is Federation of Malaya 1957, was supposed to be merged with State of Singapore. But when Malayan Union was proposed, Singapore was still uh, separated from uh, Federation of Malaya 1948, 19, Malayan Union 1946 at that time. And then when Federation of Malaya 1948 was formed, Singapore was still separated from the Federation of Malaya. And then when Federation of Malaya gained independence in 1957, Singapore was still uh, separated. But the British want there, there will be a merger between these territory. The intention of the British is they want there will be a merger because the British, no, there is their mistake when they separate this territory. And then through Malaysia agreement, this state of the Federation with its Federation of Malaya has been changed to states of Malaya. And then as uh, Article 1, Clause 2A and class, uh, Article 1, Clause 2C, State of Singapore. Remember, when Singapore formed the, Feder the Federation of Malaysia in 1963, the purpose is to federate it with the states of Malaya and the Borneo state. And the most crucial thing that we must understand is it is for the merger between states of Malaya and Singapore. It was for the merger of the Federation of Malaya and Singapore. And then the British, the British just leave it like that. They doesn't change anything after that. Why? Because we are under the UN Resolution 1541, which is a flexible decolonization process. We have many options to complete our independence. So when Article 1 of the Federal Constitution was originally written, it is for this purpose, for the decolonization process. And one of the one part of it is for the decolonization process of Singapore. So for the decolonization process of Singapore, there is two ways it will be happen. But it is up to State of Maya and Singapore to decide. British will not decide for this one to complete the independent. British only form Malaysia as a flexible process for decolonization. So to gain independent, Singapore can either merge with state of Malaya, merge here, and then it will become Malaya. You know, the definition of Malaya is still there. In Singapore constitution is still there. It means Singapore and Malay Peninsula. It means Singapore and State of the Federation. It means Singapore and Federation of Malaya 1957. That is what it means by Malaya. Maybe that's, this is the one route that Singapore can take when they want to complete the independence for by using a complete merger with State of Malaya. And then it form Malaya. Or they can choose another route which is State of Singapore, merge or combined into the states of Malaya and they complete their, their decolonization de process as one of the component states of Malaya. But how they are going to do that, we don't know. The British only left like that and it's up to them how to decide. And then what happened is that Singapore separate from Malaysia. They don't want complete merger with states of Malaya to form Malaya or join state of Malaya to complete their independence. But they want to complete their independent through separation. It is also can because the purpose of Malaysia, the purpose of Malaysia formation is for the, for the decolonization process of Sabah, Sarawak and Singapore. 
Malaysia was not formed because uh, Sabah and Sarawak and Singapore want to join Malaysia. That is not the purpose of the formation of Malaysia. The purpose of Federation of Malaysia was formed is not because we want to Sabah and Sarawak and Singapore want to join Malaya and then form Malaysia. No, that is not the purpose of Malaysia. The purpose of Malaysia is for decolonization process of Sabah, Sarawak and Singapore. This is the purpose of Malaysia. That, that is why all the Article 1 was written like that. And I tell you about the decolonization process of Singapore here. It is a flexible process based on UN Resolution 1541. So in the end, Singapore make a decision to complete the independent process, to complete the decolonization, decolonization process through separation. And now they become state of Singapore since 1965. 